literally downloaded Bumble. I was desperate. Like, do y'all not think we got thick guys hair down there? We got the same hair as men down there. Like, give us those weed whackers. Say these are the cheeks, okay? And this one's a little spread. And this is the butthole right here. Do you even know where the bean is at? It's really crazy when people say love blinds you because it really does. Because some of y'all be doing some dumbass Drop that bum on his head so he can get some common sense in that. Sana, sana, culita, derana, bitch. <laughs> Y'all, today is the day. I've been waiting to do this video. I literally already filmed this video, but like, y'all, the questions were deep. Like, deep, 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 deep. So I just needed a moment to like reevaluate myself. Like, I need to give y'all the best of the best advice. I need to tell you guys straight up, and you guys know I'll be slow as hell. And I need notes. So I got me some notes, and I'm ready to go. But as y'all already know by the title, I'm doing a Girl Talk TMI, and I'm gonna be answering a bunch of questions that you guys asked me. Like, a bunch of questions, babe. Pérame, pérame. Oh my god, that looks so good. We're gonna get into this confidence and how I got here in a bit, okay? So stay tuned. Don't click off. Don't click off. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Yeah, like right now. Subscribe right now if you aren't subscribed. What are you doing? Okay, y'all, but I did not expect there to be this much questions. There was literally 1,570 questions because i made an ig forum so that it's like anonymous and you guys can like ask whatever you want y'all sure asked y'all definitely asked and you guys went real deep too y'all went nasty this video has no limits okay i'm talking about everything and above so let's get straight into it like stop the chit chat and get into that bit back we're gonna ease our way into this because some of these questions like <laughs> okay so first question i graduated high school with no actual girlfriend so now i feel so bummed out when i see other girls hanging out any tips on how to make girlfriends so as you guys know i'm like an anxious ass bitch i'm an anxious baddie like all my anxious baddies tap in eh? even though i'm super anxious i feel like i'm an extrovert like i love to be with people i love to laugh i love to have fun and talk you know what i mean but it's really hard to get me in those spaces because there's too much going up in here there's like too much or nothing at all if you're in high school or you're in college y'all do not let these opportunities go to waste because once you become a grown bitch and you like don't really have that social experience anymore it's so hard to make friends personally you guys know i used to be struggling out there but i manifested them i manifested them so if you're in school the number one way to make friends y'all join clubs join sports teams like i can't stress this enough this is how i made all my friends was joining sports teams it's gonna be scary at first and trust me y'all i know like a bitch will be sh herself going to like the first tryout or like the first practice you know to get over that anxiousness and stuff you just have to force yourself you just have to do it and know that in the end you're not gonna regret it you know what i mean i remember when i first joined my first soccer club i didn't know nobody y'all i was silent callada for like two months i was so shy but there's always gonna be somebody like i swear there's always gonna be somebody that's going to talk to you there's always gonna be that someone that's gonna start a conversation like it's gonna happen like there's no way it's not gonna happen unless you got like a resting face and like nobody wants to talk to you like don't do that okay once i get comfortable like with people i literally act how i act on the camera like i be acting a damn fool after i got comfortable with that team y'all i used to be doing the absolute most oh my god it was just so much fun like and i was cool with everybody there's always going to be somebody that like makes you feel comfortable i know that because i'm always that person i remember when i joined my college team as well i didn't know anybody either and as soon as i got comfortable all that whenever a new person would come i would always try to make them feel comfortable and talk to them especially like like for the shyer people i would always do that because i was once that shy girl you know what i mean so you guys really just have to put yourselves out there i know it's scary but like if you really want friends then you're gonna have to put yourself out there okay okay it used to be so bad for me you guys remember like a lot of videos back when i didn't have any friends here in mexico like i just knew my boyfriend and like his cousins type stuff i literally downloaded bumble i was desperate <laughs> And I did meet some friends there, but I ended up, like, becoming so popular after that. So, like, it was crazy. Like, I didn't even need it no more. But, yeah, so join clubs, join groups, join things that you like to do. So, you'll meet people with similar interests. And going off that, with that being said, my nails are so cute. I'm going to be talking like this the whole time. With that being said... Like, once you're an adult, it's a little bit harder because, like, you don't have school. You don't have anywhere to be really social. You know what I mean? I guess you can be in your job, but, like, if you work at home, like, I know it's super hard because I work at home. I work from home. I do YouTube. You know what I mean? Who I'm going to talk to? My boyfriend and my dog and my boyfriend's family? Okay, they're fun. They're fun. But 
Like, it's really hard to get myself out there to make friends. But, y'all, I cracked the code, okay? It's, like, the same thing you would do in high school, but, like, grown people activities. Not grown people activities, but literally just joining, like, gym classes, joining dancing classes. Like, anything you like to do, there's gonna be activities for adults to do, guys. Like, I swear to God. Look through Facebook posts. I joined hella Facebook posts, like, about Cholo Squinkness because I have one. People get together, like, there's Cholo Fest where everyone brings their dog together. There's just so much going on. Because I promise you there's other people out there that want to make friends too. So it's definitely possible, guys. My number one trick, my number one key to unlock the code, all you have to do is give a compliment. Like, literally, that's it. But it has to be a genuine compliment, okay? If you say I look cute right now and I literally just got done doing Stairmaster, you're a liar. <laughs> For example, at the gym, telling a girl, like, I like your shoes, I like your top, where'd you get it, blah, blah, blah. And then the next day, maybe just a hi. Next day, oh, what are you doing today? Like, it's simple. It needs to build up, but it will be there, y'all. Your forever besties are out there somewhere, okay? If you don't have her yet. I promise you. I promise you. Next. So I got a lot of questions about the girl down there. So we're going to get into it right now, right off the bat. Because I know this is what you guys want to hear. Because I know a lot of girls out there. I know a lot of my viewers are still in high school or in college. Or just don't have older sisters or like their mom to tell them these type of things. So this is why I'm here. This is literally why I'm making this video. Because y'all already know I'm the oldest sister out of like too many damn sisters. Like <laughs> I think I'm like very well cut out for this video. If I do say so myself. So a lot of people ask me if I shave or wax down there and personally I wax because I'm gonna be honest I'm a lazy ass bitch like I do not like to shave that shit Oh my god I got another question too let me find it real fast before I get on to that Someone said hey girl so I live with my man y a veces me da hueva to shave Do you ever feel the pressure to always be kept? No I'm literally lazy like Sometimes she be bushing. What you guys need to understand, there's nothing wrong with a bush. It's natural, like, hey, now, say now. I know a lot of girls like to be hairless down there and get insecure. But first of all, there's nothing to be insecure about about having hair because it's literally natural. Guys have hairs all over their balls and don't be shaving that shit. Michael. <laughs> I promise you, when you find a man, a real man, like a real man will never care if you have hair down there. Literally. They will not give a fuck because, like, why? Okay, so with that being said, that's when I used to do shaving. Now I don't shave. I get waxes, and I really love waxes because I don't have to do nothing. Like, literally, I just go get the wax, and that's it. You know what I mean? Waxes I really like because they take the hair from the root. Shaving, it just, like, gets the top of it, and the root's still in there, and that's why you can get ingrown hairs, and and it can get like really irritated or scratchy down there because you're just not taking it from the root. So that's why I really like waxing. Honestly, I feel like the pain is not that bad. Okay, I'm lying. That shit hurts. But the good thing, guys, the good thing, if you keep doing it and you keep being consistent, it don't hurt. Like every time it hurts less and less because there's less hair. Like the hairs are more thinner. You get what I mean? And then with waxing, you can go like three, four weeks before your next wax and your hair grows in so slow. But with that being said, if you get a wax, you cannot shave during that period because then it completely ruins like all the progress you made, all the pain you went through, all the sacrifices, like literally. And I've done that so many times because... Not gonna lie, guys. I used to get waxes in high school, but I did not want my mom to know. So I would, like, make the appointments all secret. And this is when I had a car and stuff. Because my mom was, like, hella on my ass every time, everywhere I was going. Like, she had me on Life360 type stuff. Mom, if you're watching this, I will never forget. But, yeah, so it would be kind of hard to make my appointments and stuff. So sometimes I would shave and literally remove all my progress. And it would, like, hurt, like, a the next time so i really recommend waxing but if you can't wax because you're in the same position as me like your parents strict as hell like always in your damn business like bro i just want there to be no hair like nobody says i'm over here popping coochie damn if you're not in the position to get waxing this is my shaving routine my old shaving routine first to minimize ingrown hairs irritableness irrito you guys get what I'm saying, right? If you want to exfoliate, this can be the day before. I believe the day before is better, but you can also do it the day of, I think. When you shave, I always shave with men's razors because it gets the best shave. Like, gross razors, um... Like, do y'all not think we got thick ass hair down there? We got the same hair as men down there. Like, give us those weed whackers. I'm just kidding. No, but seriously. So, yeah, I always use a men's shaver. And it's with the grain, guys. Do not go against the grain because that's when you get, like, irritating redness and just... It, that's when stuff starts itching, you know what I mean? Oh, and also make sure not to go over the same place, like, too many times. Because that can also cause irritableness. What the f*** is 
is the word. Like, literally, what is the word? Irritatingness? We're gonna say irritatingness, okay? But I'm gonna be honest, guys, with you. I feel like my hairs and my coochie hairs be, like, hella strong. Not just my coochie hairs, just my hair in general. A lot of people ask me my armpit routine because I keep, like, my armpits light. And I really don't deal with, like, darkness on my armpits or none of that. Like, she itches. Like, when I shave my armpits, some people be thinking I'm crazy like my boyfriend he be thinking i'm crazy but i just go in with water like literally straight in that bitch it'd be like emergency situation so like i don't have time to do the exfoliation so meaning no it's run out the door my skin be looking good and like i don't do the same with my coochie because she's a little more sensible you know like she needs a little more taken care of but like i really do have like strong hairs like i can go over it many times and sometimes i do go against the grain i'm not gonna lie to get it really smooth but i do not recommend that guys because a lot of people do have really sensitive skin down there but like on the lips part i do sometimes go against the grain like i'm a rebel what can i say <laughs> but like when it comes to like right here the triangle do not go against the grain because that shit will hurt and it will get irritated but on the lips you could be a little more scandalous you know oh my god wait do you guys shave your booty holes <laughs> nobody asked me about this and this is a question i would definitely have like back in the day okay i'm gonna give you guys my booty hole routine <laughs> oh my god mom if you're watching this get off swag it out if you're watching this please get off what a piece please it's gonna get way worse after this so my booty hole routine <laughs> i do not shave it in the shower guys because like i literally cannot see and like i will literally like cut off my anus and it fall down the drain like that's too scary but i think i have done that before not cut off my anus but like shave in the shower like once and then i probably hurt myself and never did it again i do it in the bathroom and first of all you need a mirror babes because you need to see up in there it's scary doing it without nothing i'll tell you that say these are the cheeks okay and this one's a little spread and this is the butthole right here you're gonna shave it like this do not shave it on the butthole never shave on the butthole you're gonna scrape that shit like cheese like please so i kind of like get it inside you know what i mean like from the side i never go straight for the butthole like in the middle it's on the sides because that's where the hair be at well i mean you guys can see the hair with the mirror so it shouldn't be that hard booty holes are like way more resistant than the coochie so like i never got irritated for my butt or nothing like that but like with the coochie after i do the shaving and all that i make sure to put baby oil and then moisturizer on top because if you don't put anything on there it will be like dry and they will probably get itchy i'm pretty sure it's been a minute since i saved this thing but like i get waxes now like don't trip oh another thing shaving don't be shaving every day i wouldn't even say like i would say once a week to be honest keeping it a buck <laughs> like really i know hair grows in really fast but i feel like one of the reasons i never got really ingrown hairs or like irritableness is because i wasn't shaving a lot <laughs> Once a week, like, max type stuff. My skin wouldn't get irritated like that, you know what I mean? So, bomb. Next question. How do you get over social anxiety when meeting new people so you don't come off as having no personality? Okay, personally, I feel like my social anxiety, I don't know why, but I overly talk. Like, I always do this because I don't want there to be, like, any spaces of, like, awkwardness, you know what I mean? Because that's what I get scared of. So, I feel like I come off as having a lot of personality, but I'm really just not trying to be awkward and I don't want any fucking blank spaces of us being, like, and oh my god y'all it's so hard because ah, i feel like i'm a really good talker with new people and stuff actually it depends it took a lot of work on that i'll get into that now that i'm here in mexico and stuff and like i'm obviously not the most confident in my spanish whenever we're hanging out with people me and michael and like it gets awkward like i wish i could come in and like save the day type of shit but i'm like i don't have a humor in spanish yet so i'm gonna have to fucking sit in the shadows and witness this awkwardness with my own eyes so to that question how to get over social anxiety when meeting new people like just keep talking like that ass let your mind just do its thing and if they don't mess with it they don't mess with it if they don't mess with it them. okay guys i also got a lot of questions about like body insecurity in general and also body insecurity during the deed okay and as a person with anxiety like i remember before i ever had my first time or anything like that i wouldn't remember thinking all the time like what are they gonna think about me like oh my god is this normal is this normal is this normal and i'm here to tell you everything is normal if your chi are one looking up one looking down normal nipples one big one little normal the women you see on like models on social media everything's fake it's not realistic realistically we're not perfect at all in any way and so i just want my younger viewers and for people out there who are very insecure in their body like it's normal and when you find somebody that really loves you they will not care they're gonna love you for how you are because in their eyes you should be perfect to them you know what i mean so like personally i used to have a lot of insecurity about like my chichis i remember always thinking like oh my god what are they gonna think when they see them bro my 
my boyfriend be over here taking the hairs off my nipples like he does not care you know what i mean so like when you find that person none of this will ever matter you should feel so secure in yourself and that's how you know and if you don't feel that way and if they don't make you feel that way that's how you know they ain't the fucking one drop them now no my camera's hot because i'm spitting them fast <laughs> no but seriously guys i'm here to tell y'all to remind you guys everything on your body is normal i promise you having a dark coochie having a pink coochie having a brown coochie having a black coochie having bumps on your coochie ingrown hairs like i promise you it's all normal like a picture perfect coochie picture perfect chichis that's not real i mean some people are blessed i'm not gonna lie some people are blessing fuck you if you're blessed okay fuck you i'm no, just kidding that's just not realistic for the majority of women we're just all different and people be trying to act like they're so perfect all our booty holes are brown <laughs> <laughs> okay guys maybe i'm getting too comfortable on here okay y'all so let's move on to the juicy question that everybody wants to know how old were you when you lost your virginity did it hurt did you bleed did you Let's answer all those questions. And I really want to like kind of get serious here, guys, because I know a lot of girls that watch me might have not lost their virginity yet and they're scared or they just don't know when they should or how they should prepare and all that. And I just really want to put it out there and like put it firm, guys, that when you feel you want to lose your virginity, make sure it's really what you want to do, okay? Because I know personally, especially being in high school, guys, I know how guys are and how kind of manipulating and pressuring guys are. And trust me, I have been in those circumstances where guys just like are putting themselves on you, like wanting to further stuff that you don't really want to do, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's very sad, but it's really common. I just really want you guys to stand your ground. Like, don't do it unless you know you want to do it for yourself and you're ready for it, you know? Really stand your ground because personally guys i'm gonna be 100 percent honest my virginity how i lost my virginity was not how i wanted to lose my virginity i wasn't planning to lose my virginity things just escalated and that's just what it was honestly for me it was super painful like it wasn't enjoyable at all like to be real and i'm not gonna say that my experience is the experience for everybody because personally just what it was is i really wasn't turned on the guy did not turn me on it was just not the circumstances that i wanted to be in i didn't feel comfortable like it's just not who i wanted to lose my virginity with you know and so all those factors together like i was not turned on this coochie was on sahara desert <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why it hurt so bad. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why it hurts for a lot of girls. I'm not saying that it's because they don't want to do it with the person. But a lot of the times, nerves do just get in the way. Like, being so anxious that you can't really enjoy yourself. That can be also be a reason why it hurts. But the reason why it hurts is because you're not turned on and because you're not wet. And it's not your fault either. It's literally not your fault. Don't ever try to get into your head that, like, why it hurts or why you're not getting wet or something. It's just simple science. You're not turned on. And a lot of guys, I feel like they don't know that shit and they be trying to talk on girls so bad guys just don't be knowing shit because like they really piss me off actually guys talking about girls like talking about girls coochies all this blah 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 that have never made a girl come once in their life literally like the sad reality is that the majority of women do not finish during sex and it's really sad because guys are just mimicking what they see in like corn you know what i mean and that's not reality like for many girls that is not how we can finish and i'm gonna get into that later because a lot of people had questions about that so yeah it did hurt i don't think i bleed no i think i did bleed i think i did bleed and i did not come i did not come for a long time actually and that's the sad reality being with men except for my man okay he does that thing right <laughs> okay 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 so i got a lot of questions about girls saying how do they introduce that their man isn't pleasing them in bed this is a problem that many girls have like i feel like we all had this in our lives i know it's really hard to bring this conversation up because guys tend to get very insecure thinking they're not doing their thing right but it's just because a lot of guys majority of guys they think it's just like the eh, eh, and that's gonna make a girl come that's not the reality and i used to think i was broke for so long because i was just not finishing because we're just you know what i mean i'm like yeah it feels good but like isn't it supposed to feel like heaven type shit? like what's the deal <laughs> the reality guys as women we get the most stimulation from the clit the little bean okay that's why you guys hear like people talking about flicking the bean because that's literally what needs to be done okay there needs to be stimulation to the little bean tell your man straight up like where's you even know where the bean is at but serious i know it is really hard to bring up this conversation and it's kind of awkward it is just embarrassing bringing it up you know what i mean like it's kind of a sore topic like ooh, like i don't want to talk about sex outside of sex 
So you know what I mean? But it is a really important conversation that you guys need to have, especially if you're with your man long term and you guys are like in a committed relationship. To be honest, sex is one of the biggest things, one of the biggest factors in a relationship. I'm not saying it's the most important and I'm not saying it's gonna make or break a relationship, but it is really important and it's really important to learn each other because you guys aren't gonna know what you guys want the first time doing it, the first even five times doing it. You have to learn and tell you guys each other what you want and what you need. And you could do that just by having a simple conversation or if you're like more on the shy side, you can literally do it while you're doing the deed. Tell him or her like put your hand here and even help them with the motion. Do the DJ. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm really talking about this. You can talk them through it. And like, I feel like a lot of guys will find that even more like sexy type shit. You know what I mean? I feel like that's a really smart way to let them know. And then even after be like, I really like what we did today. I like that you did this new blah, 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 blah. Is there anything that I can improve on type stuff? There are conversations that need to be had guys to be happy because nobody wants to be together for 30 years and he's never made you finish. Let's move on. Someone said, hey, Alexis, do you have advice on how to motivate yourself to get healthier? It's been a struggle for me. I love you so much. I got a lot of questions about this too, on being like more motivated and just productive and healthy because as you guys know, I've been on my grind. Ugh. I've been in my cycling classes. I've been eating healthy and I'm just so proud of myself because it isn't easy, y'all. It really isn't easy. Me, I am not a morning person at all and it's so hard for me to wake up at the same time if i have something that i need to do like a meeting a class something i paid for i will be up i'm gonna be a little bit irritated but i'm gonna be up and do it you know what i mean back before i started doing my spinning classes and stuff like i could not wake up early for the gym for sure like, I just can't. Like, obviously, I want to go to the gym and I want to be productive, but I literally cannot get myself up. And what really helped me was finding something that I actually like to do, which is my spinning classes. I love my spinning classes. I look forward to go to my spinning classes because they're fun. You know what I mean? And it gives me that ass. Uh, and that no waste. Waste where? She's gone. She cycled away. And personally, for me, I just feel like getting my workout done early in the morning, like, sets me up for the day to be productive. Like, if I do not work out in the morning, guys, I feel like my day will be so horrible i feel like what am i doing with my life like that's how i feel like i feel like bad and i feel tired like it's kind of weird like i have to get my workout in the morning but obviously that's not realistic for a lot of people who have to work in the morning and stuff and they have to go at night even with that being said it don't matter if it's morning or night i feel like what will motivate you best is finding something you actually love to do exercising wise because i feel like people don't realize how good exercising is not even just for you to lose weight just for your mental health for your health Health in general it makes you feel more energized it makes you feel better happier like you literally get dopamine serotonin all that nobody's saying you have to go to the gym but like just getting a little physical every day doing something you like going to a dance class going on a hike walking your dog and doing it every day will really change your habits moving on to the health aspect of like eating wise this has also been really hard for me because you guys know i love me some chicken i love me some fried shit. i love some fries first of all there's this place called Chicken Shack. Oh my god, when me and Michael were in college. Oh, it was so good. Fries with like buffalo sauce and buffalo chicken. Oh, as much as it tastes so good, I always remind myself how the food's gonna make me feel. Being realistic, that type of food, greasy foods, like fat foods, hella high sugar or carbs, I don't know, just a bad it makes you lazy it makes you unproductive it makes you irritated this is literal facts because what they put in that food it's not real it's all processed stuff you know what i mean so it's gonna have an effect so that's what really helped me to start eating healthier and stuff when i think about going to get something like that i think about do i really want to feel like tomorrow unproductive mad i try to think about like the future type stuff and that's not saying that you can't enjoy a little burger or some fries or some like unhealthy stuff every once in a while me and michael actually every weekend we go out to eat so we can pick whatever we want on the weekend but during the week we try to eat as clean and healthy as possible and then once the weekend goes we get a little snack or a little something that's kind of like a reward you know what i mean so nobody's saying you gotta cut it out all the way because that's just so hard and unrealistic to do to be honest especially living in america like seriously Seriously, if I still lived in the US, I don't know if I could do it guys. I don't know if I could do it because there's literally fast food on every single corner You need a lot of like determination and discipline. Okay, so next question Hey everybody, what video is this? Girl talk, girly pop time when you're not a girl, hey, so go outside. Give me a question, give me a, like a man, like a man answer. Okay, I got a good one. What should I do if my man isn't helping around the house? We just moved in together and I'm so tired of cleaning up after him. What it know? 
couldn't relate because I think I'm I'm a uh, cooking, cleaning. Uh, you look unsure yourself. <laughs> I'm unsure of how bad the beating is gonna be after this. Josh, shut up. No, he cleans, but he half ass cleans, bro. But I clean. But clean it right. But she barely cleans, but when she cleans, she deep cleans. <laughs> So it's like she complains about everything, but I'm like, mother trucker, you're not cleaning on the regular though. Yes, I, I remember at the apartments when she would go to school, I would clean shit. You and would, then you I would <laughs> miss some spots because I would be alone all day and I'm like, bro, I don't just want to be cleaning. And then she comes in, let's clean today. And she's like, ah, Michael, puta pinche cochinero. No mames. I didn't cochinero. clean under, under a TV. Who cleans under a TV on the regular? So you're just going to let it be dirty? This is what causes all the dirty stuff. You guys can't see it, but there's a hair here. Look, look, still can't see you. Thin ass hair. <laughs> like and subscribe if you want to see me again in a girly talk. This is strictly girl time. I'm gonna make my own channel, I'm gonna do boy talk. <laughs> and I'm exposing you. I know you're exposing me in this video. I'm gonna watch it before you upload it. <laughs> okay, y'all, so going off that question, I also got a lot of questions about like advice on moving in with your boyfriend for the first time. I also got a question about somebody saying they're scared to move in with their boyfriend because they hear a lot of horror stories. Like it breaks up relationships a lot of the times. And I'm here to tell you guys that moving in with your boyfriend is going to be like one of the biggest changes in your life, to be honest, because it's so different from being with your boyfriend going on dates with him seeing him even if you're seeing him every day it's so different from doing that versus literally living with him because you're gonna see everything everything you're gonna see the chonies on the floor him not getting his beard hair off the sink just don't do it <laughs> i'm just kidding it's definitely gonna be a change not even just saying on the guy's part on your part too because there's gonna be things that you do that your partner doesn't like whenever you live with a person it's gonna be hard because you guys just have different ways of living you have different habits you know what i mean but advice i have when you're moving on with your boyfriend you guys need to put it down from the beginning because i know majority of the time it's not the girls being nasty little it's the guys like they're just dirty you know what i mean guys are just dirty y'all just need to be laying it down flat from the front like let them know i'm not gonna be cleaning up your stuff i'm not gonna be cleaning by myself it's gonna be a partner thing it's gonna be a helping thing i mean every relationship is different but personally me and michael it's always like a helping thing it's not like you do this i do this it's like if he's cooking i'm gonna do the dishes if i'm cooking he's doing the dishes if i'm cleaning something he's picking up something else you know what i mean it's always a helping thing so for the person that asked if they should move in with their boyfriend because they're scared i think definitely it's something that should happen and I honestly feel like it should happen kind of soon not too soon but like me and my boyfriend we literally moved in together like three months in time and then moved to Mexico at six months like obviously there was a lot of arguments but it really helped us to set boundaries of what we want and what we don't want because I feel like if you guys are together for like three four years or even like two three years and you guys finally move in together those type of arguments can break a relationship you know what I mean and I feel like it's best to see if a relationship is gonna last that or not it's best to see in the beginning rather than like years down the road and I also don't want to make it seem like it's a bad thing or it's a hard thing to move in with your boyfriend because it really is a beautiful thing at that too living together learning to live together learning more about each other i know my boyfriend inside and out he knows me inside and out he's seen every single part of me and i've seen every single part of him and it makes us so comfortable with each other you know i'm literally living with my best friend and my lover at the same time so yeah that's all i gotta say for that question okay so now i'm gonna start answering some questions that people had like specifically like they kind of like made paragraphs type shit i got a lot of paragraphs y'all you guys are giving me your life stories we're gonna get into the tea someone said my ex-boyfriend of three years was being very sneaky recently and when i went through his phone i saw messages between him and a girl who he thinks as a sister red flag number one if they ain't biological there ain't no sisters or brothers in this bitch he thinks as her as a sister yet he calls her babe calls her to go to sleep texts her 24 7 and after telling him i don't feel comfortable being in a relationship anymore he's been doing everything and anything in his power to make sure we're still together i know at the end of the day i have to stop being chicken and just block him but i can't bring myself to do it even though i really want to girl stand up stand up open your eyes <laughs> it's really crazy when people say love blinds you because it really does because some of y'all be doing some dumb ass and like even i did some dumb ass shit, i'm not gonna lie because love does blind you you need to be stronger like you know he's in the wrong you know damn well that is not his sister you know damn well and you deserve better than that there's so many men in this world and women if you're lesbian we're inclusive around here there's just so many people in this world what makes you think that's really the love of your life if he's doing that if he can't even have the audacity decency to be loyal to you that's the bare minimum do better and get the 
fuck out of there. Block him and move on with your life. I know how hard it is, but the best way to like move on is block. No contact and don't ever unblock them, okay? You're stronger than this. You're stronger than this. Next. My boyfriend is 20. I'm 19. I've been working since I was 16. He's always on and off with jobs. I'm currently in school and working and he's doing neither. So he's a bum. Okay. I don't pay for everything, but I feel like I do pay the majority of the time. I tell him to get a job, but he thinks I'm just being mean or trying to argue. On top of that, he has anger problems and is bipolar. What should I do? We've been together three years and it's annoying me at this point. Baby, if he's doing this three years in and he's literally a 20 year old, drop that bum on his head so he can get some common sense in that bitch because you're literally 20 you're grown at this point like it's time to man up he needs the real world to hit him you don't want somebody like that in your life he don't have any goals for himself and do you really want somebody like that holding you back i know you got goals for yourself i know you try to be top of the top 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 you're gonna let a little bum from your hometown hold you back like that you're better than that you're gonna find the love of your life that's gonna give you everything you ever wanted like literally everything you ever wanted in a partner you're gonna find that person like i promise you there's millions and billions of people People in this world drop that but i'm like please 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 he's holding you back babes he's holding you back okay y'all so i'm gonna do a few more questions yeah yeah i've been talking too long i might do a part two to this so let me know how you guys feel if you guys want a part two because there's like hella more questions i could have done like literally a thousand more so somebody said not a question but i think you should talk about being a girl's girl and how to do it because you got hella haters factos puro factos i do got hella haters if you ain't got no haters you ain't popping like when i was in middle school i was a hater not gonna lie but because i was so insecure and so jealous and once i learned to love myself i was a girl's girl i think embracing who you are as a woman and your femininity allows you to love yourself and others you as a woman Woman that many other girls look up to should talk about it you're a real ass bad bitch with the fattest ass and you're just so bomb with a good ass heart thank you some girls can be so mean to others and it's sad so yeah i really am a girl's girl like i literally just love women i love being a girl like it's just such a beautiful thing and i really hate these hater ass bitches and it, it honestly makes me sad like i don't even get mad anymore i used to like be really reactive and respond to a lot of my haters because like bitch you're not gonna say that shit on my face though are you though <laughs> and you're wrong because i'm a bad bitch i don't give a fuck what you say i used to respond like crazy and now i just let it be because like i finally realized people are gonna judge people are gonna say shit whatever they want because they are insecure with themselves because they're projecting people will do anything to try to tear you down because they wish they could be you they wish they could be in the position you are and this is not even talking about like money wise or like having all this stuff like it can literally just be your personality you being confident people will tear that down because they want that so bad and they can't do it they can't be like that because they're so insecure and they hate themselves so bad so they want other people to feel like that you know what i mean and i hate hate when i see other girls acting like this to other girls especially when it comes to like looks like things that us as girls tend to be insecure about and I hate when I see other girls coming for those things because they know firsthand. You know what I mean? It's just so ugly to me because like, what do you gain from it? Like literally, what do you gain from it? Especially when you're out of high school, you're in your 20s and shit. Because I've been seeing grown ass women in comments. You're still hurting. Go to therapy. Go heal. Like it's really bad because what do you gain from that? You're not going to get nobody's attention with that. You're not going to get no man from that. Like it's just embarrassing to me when I see stuff like that because I see straight through it. Like I know why you're like that because you're miserable because nobody loves you. You don't even love yourself. And honestly, it's really sad because a lot of the times I feel like it's not even their fault in a way because a lot of people tend to be these miserable ass people and like so insecure in themselves from the way they've grown up from the way people have treated them you know what i mean so it's kind of all they know i remember one of my youtube videos i did with michael when we were talking about how like if somebody cheats on you like i'm out like i don't know why people stay some people grew up with no love all they know of love is like abuse they think this is what they deserve in life or this they think this is the best they can get you know what i mean i don't know if i'm like está saliendo bien i don't know if i'm saying it right and personally i feel like one of the reasons why i'm so strong and like secure in myself as a woman how I look and confidence it's honestly because I grew up in such a loving family my mom has always told me we were beautiful she's always like instilled it into our brains that like we're beautiful we're smart we're strong women and it's sad because a lot of girls don't have that a lot of girls even have the opposite like their own mothers telling them stuff like you're fat you're ugly like nobody will ever love you and this is the reality 
so this is why i do feel for those people for girls like that that are just like miserable and haters because that's just really all they know and they feel like they should treat others like that because that's how they were treated and it's really hard as someone who's never been in that position to have grown up like that i can't really say that it's easy to like change your mentality about that it is possible you can do it especially when you get older and you're adult and your brain's more developed you can never change your trauma but you can learn from it and you can learn more about yourself and you can grow from it there's always room to grow always there's always room to change that's all i gotta say okay so this is gonna be the last question and i really wanted to answer this because i feel like it's important to know but someone said would you be offended if you're having sex with a guy and he doesn't want to go raw you guys can't continue because he ran out of condoms you suggest he pull out but he refuses sorry this is long it just offended me i don't know if it should he's someone i can be honest and open with but i don't want to seem like i'm being emotional or doing too much first of all girl that's a king right there that's someone who cares about their health it's too normalized these days just to be doing the deed raw with anybody and everybody and that's not healthy and it's something very serious because it can have very long-term effects guys like it's really something serious and i don't think at all it should be taken as an offense if someone wants to use a condom or if someone wants to be safe it has nothing to do with you or your body or nothing it literally just has to do with their health and them wanting to be safe and that's like the most important thing and that's really that's a green flag actually girl that's a really good green flag because most guys do not be given a damn like at all most guys want to go without the condom because it feels good like i've heard everything guys and i just want you guys to like really be safe out there because it is something serious and like you don't even have to be like a hoe or do it with like 20 guys however many guys to get an std you can literally lose your virginity with one person it can take one person guys and you to get something hiv herpes chlamydia even something that can be resolved but it's just something that could be prevented you know what i mean so i want you guys to stay safe out there especially my younger audience out there it is something really really important and i also really suggest getting std testing whenever you get a new partner before you get a new partner i mean so basically that's all i want to say it's better to be safe than sorry i promise you guys be safe out there don't let these guys convince you or peer pressure to do anything that you don't want to do don't let them put their dirty dicks inside of you okay you're too much of a queen okay y'all so i actually have one more question i'm gonna do because i got this a lot of times and i should have answered it more in the beginning of the video but name all those name all those a lot of people were asking me how to keep the girly smelling good and on her ph balance okay first and foremost i don't think a lot of girls realize how easy it is to get your ph off balance it's not unnormal or uncommon if you feel a change in your vagina or like in the smell or anything because it really is super easy to throw it off balance especially messing with guys because they just don't know how to clean themselves first of all that's one of the main reasons that your ph is off so if you notice your ph being off after messing with somebody definitely tell them to clean it up or i'm out straight up straight up Another reason that can throw your pH balance off is wearing tight clothing too much. You gotta let the cooter breathe, okay? At night, it's best to wear loose shorts, like with no chonies, nothing. You need to let her breathe at times. And after working out, it's a must to take off those clothes ASAP. Bacteria grows in dark and moist places, and that's literally the culture, okay? So be safe about that. Also, when it comes to UTIs and all that, they are very common, guys. I don't want you guys to be thinking like you're dirty because you have a UTI or a yeast infection. They are super common and like literally every woman has gotten at least one in her life i believe there is over-the-counter medication to help that also i know taking cranberry supplements is really good i always take cranberry um vitamins every day and i feel like that does help a lot to keep her under control okay because she's feisty no i'm just kidding and a lot of people were asking me like what do i do to keep her clean because like i live in a very hot and humid area it's really just showering like you don't have to do much she needs to be clean every day though let me not stress this enough she needs to be washed every day you should be showering every damn day wash that ass every damn day but that don't mean you gotta wash your hair some people get it mixed up but you should be washing that booty and that coochie every damn day okay literally just with water is fine there shouldn't be any soap going into your coochie y'all that will definitely mess up your ph balance as well washing her with water i always take my cranberry supplements and drinking a lot of water is a really big thing your diet and you drinking water and like the stuff you drink does have a really big impact i can notice changes if i don't drink 
drink a lot of water in a day versus if I do drink a lot of water in a day. Also, wipes are very good to have. I always put some in my purse, like when I'm going traveling or something, but to have in your bathroom as well, especially when you're taking shits. Wipe that shit up, okay? Because some toilet paper ain't doing justice. But also make sure if you get wipes and stuff, they don't have any of like those chemicals and stuff because that stuff can also throw off the pH of your cooch. Like it's crazy. We're just so like sensitive we're just queens you know like we need the best of the best period if you feel like your ph is off there's actually these little like pills they're like pills but you don't swallow them they're called phd i think i haven't used them in a while but whenever i feel like my ph was off just put one of them hoes up in there i'll put a picture right here and it's basically boric acid and it balances out your ph balance like right then i know those help a lot of girls so that's basically all the advice i have make sure you're drinking your water take your cranberry pills bomb take your vitamins like honestly it's not that hard and wash that cooch every damn day okay get up in there just with water though you can also use honey pot i've used honey pot before and i do like it because it makes me feel a little more cleaner you have to be careful with that because that stuff can also throw your ph off too i know it's supposed to be made for coochies but like motherfuckers be lying out here and put hella chemicals in their shit also y'all fragrances is a no-no for the cooch cooch okay Okay? Never put anything that has fragrance, wipes, wash, none of that. Don't ever use none of that close to your coochie because it will immediately throw your pH off. So yeah, that's all I have to say for this video, guys. Let me know if you guys want another one of these videos. I went kind of crazy. I don't even know if I want to upload this. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe and a little comment. And I'll see you guys next week, every Wednesday and Sunday.